Hello, everybody. It's been quite a week so far, and we are uh, going to take a little bit of a break and solder together something for Throwback Thursday. So, uh, as you may be familiar, these are Forest Mims Engineers mini notebooks, and they contain a bunch of useful reference information for uh, hardware engineers, which have stood the test of time and are still like very popular aesthetically as well as in terms of their use. So. They're all sort of hand drawn on this graph paper. And I'm sure that, you know, they did editing and stuff, but uh, it's very charming and classic. And uh, our friend Star Simpson has actually adapted a bunch of the circuits herein, three of them, into uh, PCB kits called Circuit Classics. And I'm actually just going to take the top one off the stack, which turns out to be a bar graph voltage indicator. Um, you know, let's not start with that one. But we could start with either of the other ones, the LED, dual LED flasher or the stepped tone generator. And we're going to put together one of them today. Uh, so let's take a look at what's inside of here. Uh, and of course, you can check out the link in the description to the video for the official page on these, which is circuit classics. What is it? Dot com? Yes, circuitclasses.com. All right. And we're going to take a look at it now. So here is the first one. Uh, that I want to put together. It is the stepped tone generator decided just because. <laughs> uh, inside of here, you have a beautiful card explaining, showing the circuit. It does have a little piezo buzzer speaker in there. So we will be able to hear this right away if we do things properly. <laughs> uh, we've got three potentiometers. I wonder what values they are. Uh, one mega ohm. These are all variable resistors. Uh, one mega ohm and. Where's the third? Oh, this 5K. Cool. Then you've got your little speaker. You've got a chip, which is a 556. Uh, oh, that's made of two 555 timers stuck together in one chip, basically. So a 555 timer is used to create little, um, well, basically, it turns things on and off on certain timings. And you can use it to create uh, sounds or pulse and LED or any kind of uh, tons of stuff like that. And then we have some capacitors and a resistor and things like that. Cool. Uh, you can tell a regular resistor here from a variable resistor by the little arrow going in. And on the back, let's see. Oh, it's got a cartoon! <laughs> Step tone generator. Here's a funny musical instrument. It's made up of a coach, an athlete with a hammer, and a drum. Uh, the coach keeps time. Every time he yells go, the athlete swings her hammer and hits the drum. To change how the instrument sounds, you can change how the coach yells. Uh, how big the hammer is, and how hard the athlete swings. Uh, yelling hammer and strength otron. <laughs> the stuck tone generator works in a similar way. So you have a trigger. Uh, the knob labeled R1 in the circuit controls how quickly the coach yells. This is also called frequency. The knob labeled R3 controls the size of the hammer or the tone of the sound. Interesting. Toothpick, chopstick, or sledgehammer. And then finally, R4 controls how far hard the athlete hits the drum or the volume. Um, in the circuit, this all happens really fast, thousands of times every second. By playing with the controls, you are the master of the sound. Now, someone, uh, Nixon has just asked, is it in a stable mode? I actually am not sure. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've dipped into that stuff. Um, you can construct an a stable timer with a couple of transistors actually and do little blinky things with it but i'm not sure if that's technically what this is let's have a look at the product page do, do, do. Uh, so the one for the stepped tone generator is here uh, la, la, la. So this circuit gained a life of its own jumping from the pages of the 555 timer ic circuits engineers engineers mini notebook the 555 timer IC circuits engineer's mini notebook. <laughs> I've got to get that. Oh, I love 555s and I want to play with them more. And out into the world as the storied Atari punk console. Oh my goodness. I made a guitar out of this thing. It was terrible. It was called the Atari Tar. Let's not go back there. <laughs> but if you search Atari Tar on YouTube, you'll probably find it. Uh, well known for enabling the creation of sounds just like classic Atari console games from the 1980s. It provides a fun audio centric project as well as an interesting introduction to digital circuitry, feedback and oscillators. You've got the list, uh, the bill of materials here, alligator clips and stuff, tools you need. Do I need a, okay, we've got a coin cell battery. 
which is cool. Uh, assembly steps. It doesn't tell us about what exactly the deal is here, but I'm sure we can find out more later. All right, so uh, back into the real world. Let's start putting this thing together. And get you off mini notebooks off the table. I don't have the 555 one, do I have it? Digital logic circuits, schematic symbols, and formulas, tables, and basic circuits. Lots of useful stuff here. Sold back in the day at Radio Shack for $159. <laughs> I got these, I think it, you know, I might have gotten these from a friend. I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time. Uh, similarly, these came from a uh, good friend who is moving away, sadly. So what else have we got in here? Beckers, thank you. I could not have done this without your contribution. So this is from uh the crowdfunding campaign and there's a little how to solder guide from getting started in electronics by forest mims the same guy let's get a little bit more light on this situation there we go yes um ooh, it's wrapped in this tissue paper that's so nice let's see what else is in here we've got your components and you've got a little display stand and you've got a little alcohol prep pad that might be too remove uh, any solder flux from the surface after you assemble it, is my assumption, so that it looks really nice. Cool, because these are aesthetic objects, so you got this nice little solid wood doohickey to stand it on later. We'll put that aside, along with the prep pad. Um, ooh, time to open it. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to throw them in uh, and I'll be able to see it if it's on Facebook or YouTube. Emmanuel says, reminds me of old electronics books to make uh, VIC 20 controlled robots. I'm actually not familiar with what that is, but I'm definitely going to look it up after the show. Okay, so aesthetics here. Oh, so uh, not only is it a beautiful color that of course I resonate with, <laughs> You've got your little power uh, contacts here. You can stick a little alligator clip in there if you want or solder to it or whatever. It's got a through hole. It's got little markings for ground and positive voltage. You've got uh, little spots for the potentiometer's mounting bits to go. And look at this. Uh, so this is ground planes, copper planes underneath the surface solder mask that are there just for texturing to make it kind of look like the original notebook texture. I've seen an interview with Star where she talked about that. It's super cool. You've got your circuit diagram right next to the actual circuit, which is super cool. And then on the back, oh, look at this. This circuit produces sounds resembling plucked violin strings to drum as R1 and R3 are adjusted. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I'm so glad I picked this one. Ugh. Uh, frequency of stepped output decreases in progressively smaller increments as R3 is reduced in value. My guess is, oh, you know what? It might be a linear pot, but um, the way that we perceive pitch depends, it varies based on whether it's low or high. So, uh, you know, a small adjustment in uh, the pitch at the low end doesn't sound like much, but uh, it sounds like a lot when it's at the high end, which is why screechy sounds are really unpleasant for us, besides other things. Okay, um, <laughs> as R3 is reduced in value, graph shown here is typical for values shown. Okay to change C1, C2, and R1. And presumably that would change, you know, be your frequencies, things like that. Uh, all these lovely labels on here. And look at this, you've even got, look at that. Okay, so, you can see all the traces from both sides of the board. See what she's done here? So there's copper traces um, under the white lines. Those are the things that are connected on the top of the board. Uh, and then the things that are connected on the opposite side of the board are indicated by removing the solder mask in those areas. So it's bare PCB material, which is why it's uh, matte instead of glossy. And you can also kind of see the light come through it. That's really cool. So you can see the whole set of connections from both sides of the board, but on each side uh, where the copper is, you can kind of see it raised by the copper underneath. So these ones have traces underneath the white lines. And then the bare FR4 is where um, you've got traces on the other side. Okay, let's start putting this together. I'm curious what these guys are. Huh. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, 
where are the scissors? We'll use clippers. <laughs> They're good for everything. Anti-ESD bag. Nicely put together inside of the bag. Oh, and you've got little rubber feet to put underneath it if you want to just display it like this and mess around with it or whatever. Uh, here's your connection for a surface mount soldered uh, CR2032 coin cell battery holder. And yeah, and little Forrest Mims' signature down here. That's so cool. Along with Circuit Classics, which again has some copper underneath it for a nice little raised feel. It's like embossed. <laughs> so aesthetically pleasing. And we're going to put this together right now. And hopefully make some noise. So let's see. Do they have directions for what order to put this together in? Um, I haven't seen one. And without that, typically what one would do is start with the lowest raised pieces and go uh, along to the highest ones. So I'm going to start with the resistors probably. Well, there's only one resistor actually, <laughs> except for the variable resistors. So let's see, we've got resistors, chips, probably do that. Um, probably do this next. Then your capacitors, save these alligator clips for later. Uh, then your really tall things, the buzzer and then the pots, I think. And uh, then we'll put the feet on and hook it up. Cool. I've also pulled some coin cell batteries so we can get started right away with this. So let's go. I've got my soldering iron plugged in. We're going to start that heating up. And here is our one little resistor. <laughs> Where do you go? Mm, R2, right here. Oh, you know what? Uh, so we have a Raspberry Pi 4, 400, my life, but so this guy. And what I'm doing right now is um, I'm trying to write some generative music in Sonic Pi so that we can have background music while we do soldering videos. And that's going to be awesome. Uh, I might actually, <laughs> what I'm working on right now is hooking it up to, to my brainwaves to make generative music from that. So you can see when I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> Here we go. So R1, R2 rather, bend those legs back. And I'm going to solder it on the other side, but I think I'll put a few more components through before I flip it over and solder. Here we have our 556 chip. As usual, it comes with the legs bent outward a little bit. And what I tend to do for that is I just like put it on the desk and sort of rock it toward the legs to push them inward a little bit. So they should be a little bit more straight. And we have a notch indicating the side with pin one. Oh, interesting. There's also a little dot. But uh, on the uh, circuit board, we have a little notch indicated for that to go. I didn't quite push it enough. Can we get it in? Mm, come on. Now I got to push it a little bit more. Which side is sticking out? That one. Don't push it too far, though, or else you won't be able to get in for the opposite reason. And it's a lot harder to push it out again than it is to push it in. Come on. Ah, so close. <laughs> Another thing you can do is uh, use a socket. If you happen to have a 16, 16? 14 pin socket uh, laying around, those typically have straight legs. And also, it protects your chip from damage because sometimes you're chip is sensitive to high heat. And so soldering it directly into the board can be a little bit risky, especially if you're not very experienced with soldering and you tend to sort of have to reheat things and while. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be careful in um, flipping this over. One thing people can, oh, you know what? That's actually pretty well held in with a friction fit. Uh, another thing you can do is like put a little bit of super glue underneath or a little bit of blue tack or whatever to sort of hold it in place, but that's actually doing well. So let's solder these on. 
very exciting. Uh, oh, one resistor called R2. R1 is the variable resistance. Yes, there are three variable resistors, R1, R3, and R4. Uh, and then R2 is the only one that's a, a, I guess you'd say static resistor? I don't know. Regular resistor. What people think of when they think of a resistor. Do, 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 do. Come on. Gotta get some... Let's clean this bad boy. Get a little bit of solder on there. Oh, you know what? I think I left my soldering iron for on for a while. <laughs> Somewhat recently. I got distracted. And so it might be a little bit corroded. Which would be very sad. Oh, we, we've got some... We've got some solder going on there. That's good. I'll have to get some of that tip cleaner. And put it to use. Get on there! Boy! This is going not as well as usual, but so it goes. Cool. That's pretty good. Now that we're kind of warmed up, we can do this chip, which does seem snugged up against the bottom, so that's great. Get on there. There we are. Fourteen pins in all on this chip. The five 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 that it's uh, it's sort of a dual version of the five five five, which has eight pins. I'm assuming that they share ground and voltage. That's probably why there's two fewer. Then you've got like trigger and reset pins. You know, every now and then I go to the five 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 diagram and I uh, try to sort of really internalize what it's doing, but um, I think it's going to take a few more tries because it has to do with, you know, the ratios between the voltages applied to each pin, uh, when something resets, when it triggers, and it's all about, like, which pin is higher and which pin is lower and, like, how much and stuff like that, and it's, oh, it's so much to keep track of. So someday I'll have a firm grasp of 555s, but that day is not today. All right, so we've got this chip on here. We're going to clip off these resistor legs. I like to hold them down with my fingers so that they don't fly everywhere. Okay, and now we're already on the back side here, so I'm going to attach this uh, battery holder. Comes from an SMD reel, tape reel here. And this backstop is on this side, so we're going to put that towards the inside of the circuit. Also, there's a very nice matching uh, outline on the silk screen there. So I'm going to put a little bit of tin solder on all of these pads. Gonna tin them a little bit. Okay. This one just a little bit. That's to that's honestly as much of a physical thing as it is an electrical thing. It sort of uh, pushes against the coin cell. Come on. Lead free solder is always a little bit more finicky than leaded. So I've got my tweezers here, which I'm going to use to apply this because otherwise, because this thing is basically a giant heat sink, it's going to get very hot and I don't want to be holding that with my fingers, but I do need to hold it in place. Wish my third hand had better, <laughs> uh, tighter holders. Come on. Oh boy, my little TS-100 is not super happy. <laughs> with the amount of heat it's having to put out, especially for the lead-free solder. Oh boy. Oh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Come on. Yes, all right. That's one side done. Let's do the other. I can just hold the board now. I'm just trying to, <laughs> let's get a little bit more thermal contact here by putting a little bit more melted solder on here. Okay, come on, I know you can do it. Yes. This part just is just going to take a minute. That's all. Come on. I know you can melt the rest of that. I know you can do it. Come on. It is trying to heat up the entire battery holder, you know, because that uh, 
sinks heat. So, you know, there we go. That's a pretty good connect. Let's put a little bit more on there just, just for fun. Yes. Now that's nice. Ah, much better. So now we have our battery holder on there. We're going to do the capacitors next, I think. And I wonder, are they all the same? Are they different? There's C1, C2, and C3. Uh, what does our circuit diagram say? C3 is 10 microfarads. C1, 0.01. C2, 0.1. Okay, so these are all different, but they'll be labeled here above the uh, negative stripe that corresponds to the short leg, which shows us which is the negative side of our polar uh, capacitor. So this one is 0.1 microfarads. And it's going to go, I wish these were, oh, okay. So C2 is 0.1 microfarads. So let's find that one. Uh, C2, there we go. Positive and negative. Putting it on the side with the silk screen marker. Um, there's nice, there's multiple ways this shows positive and negative. There's um, this little tiny plus sign on here. There is a white stripe corresponding to the white stripe on the capacitor. And it's very friendly. And then also, you have your typical thing where one of the pads is square and one is a circle. So in this case, the positive one is a square. There we go. Bend those legs out. Doop. And now the second one. What's this? 0.1, wait, 2.1 microfarads? I think one's supposed to be 0 0.01. Oh no! Oh no! Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, okay. I probably have a 0 0.01 microfarad one around. I just, um, no, I don't have that capacitor box right here and it would take a minute of digging. So let's see. Then we have C3 is gonna be our third one. Please tell me this one is different. 10 microfarads, splendid. Okay, yeah. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Great. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I will pull out the capacitor box for a second and just see if I don't have a point zero one one. Ooh, someone's asking if we ever did a review on the Axolotti. We have not done one on that board because I haven't gotten my hands on one yet. But uh, we did do an interview with uh, Vitol, who's an amazing uh, musical artist based in Russia, who, let's see, video. <laughs> Here we go. He makes these super weird and cool instruments using the axolotl in some of them. I forget what that one is, but he made one that I saw at Ars Electronica that uh, is made with blood, his own human blood, uh, using the axolotl board. Let me see if it's here. Uh, not so much. Well. Someday I'll dig up that video and you'll see the blood synthesizer. <laughs> but no, we haven't done a, a review of the Axolotl yet, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, capacitors, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see about this. So we're on a quest for a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor because the kit had two 0.1 microfarad ones and that's no good. Uh, here we go, one microfarad, that's no One microfarad, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, ooh, this might be, no. 10 microfarads, that's no good. For our uses, what's this? We've got 220, and we've got 
ones that are flipped around and not useful. So it's not easy to see. Um, 4.7. This might be a... I'm only going to spend a very short while looking for this because it could... 10 microfarads. It could be a um, wild goose chase and I don't want to waste too much time. We got 10 again. So many 10 microfarads. Do, do, do. What's this? Mm, 10. Ugh. We've got non-polar ones, which are also no good. 10. Ugh, why so many 10 microfarads? 100. That's at least different. Da, da, da. 1,000 microfarads, which is the same as a millifarad, I think. Um, oh, wait, no. It would be... It wouldn't be mm. okay. One microfarad. I always mix up nano and micro. I think micro is a million and nano is. Hmm. Hmm. I'll look it up later. Point one microfarad. Oh, it's also nonpolar, so that's no good. One hundred. Man, we may not. We may be out of luck. Ten. Wait, no. Ten volts. One thousand microfarads. What's this tiny one? Is this another 10 microfarad? Curses. Well, we'll just put it together and see what it sounds like, I guess. She said that you can mix or mess around with the different capacitor and resistor um, values. So yeah, we'll continue assembling and see how it goes. You bit the bit the bit um da 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 that's how I feel right now. It's like my entire brain. This whole week is just like and inside my head, you know. Um, so hard to focus on anything. So it's good to do something that's just kind of relaxing and physical and tactile, and it's going to give us some nice, pretty music noises. Hopefully, uh, depending on what happens with that capacitor, I can always swap it out later on. It's no problem. But ah, my soldering skills are going out the window as well. I've also crossed over a couple of these leads. Come on. There we go. So I got to get those out of the way so they don't overlap. There we go. Okay. Come on. We've got one more pad to do, but there's another lead that's overlapping it, so that's no good. What uh what music do you all get in your head when it's just sort of like monkey time? <laughs> the cantina jazz is always a classic, but I like Benny Hill too. <laughs> um yeah. It's because we're doing a musical thing as well. My brain is like totally going into music mode. Uh, yeah, let's clip this off. Okay. All right, so we have four more components going on. By my count, we've got this little speaker. We've got three potentiometers and two of them are the same and one is different. So let's grab this guy because he's shorter than the others. Speaker goes here, SPKR. And it looks like they haven't marked a polarity on these. It has a polarity marked on the speaker, but the deal with a, especially a piezo speaker, uh, or any speaker, honestly, that might not actually be a piezo. That might actually be, a, that's got an actual coil in there. Cool. But the deal with any um, speaker is that it is a vibrating membrane that vibrates the air and sends basically waves of differential pressure uh, that hit your eardrum and make that vibrate. So that's um, why, it doesn't matter so much if a uh, speaker is wire <laughs> wired up uh, the right way or the wrong way, if it's a really simple one like this. Let's let's be careful. If it's a really simple one, um, and if it's mono, not stereo. But yeah, deal is, uh, since it's just a vibrating membrane, uh, it doesn't really matter which way it's hooked up because it's going to vibrate at the same frequency. And you're not going to be able to tell if it starts with the uh, membrane being like pulled in toward the magnet or pushed out away from the magnet. So it's it's pretty much the same. I'm going to pull this little protective guy off. 
Ooh, yeah, you can see the little copper coils inside the magnet wire wound around the magnet. That's very nice. Um, let's stick it on here. Yeah, see, that doesn't have any polarity. There's no polarity marked on the thingy. We're just going to put it on. And these have little stiffer legs, so I can't actually bend those outwards without hurting my fingers a bit. So I'm not going to. I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> we might have to solder this one sideways. <laughs> I'm guessing that this is uh, one of the what goes around in your head when you're thinking of nothing. And uh, that sounds incredibly entertaining. Super Mario music in my head. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would that tune make me think of Stan and Ollie? I don't know Stan and Ollie. I do know Syphil and Ollie, though. Little uh, sock puppets that do some music sometimes. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? I could have just done this the whole time. Like, just... Oh, dear. That's a terrible job. But what I'm going to do is um, hold this the right way up, and I'm going to tack solder one of them, which is just, like, a really poor solder job that's just going to, like, hold it in place while I hold the speaker in place from the bottom. And that's going to basically keep it from falling out of the circuit board. So now I can do a nice soldering job on the other one, and then I'll come back and revisit the first one so that it will they'll both look nice and function well. OK, got to let that heat up this pin and the solder pad. Um, the deal with these speaker contacts is that they're also relatively thick. So they're thicker than a resistor leg or an LED leg or whatever. Come on. Yes. Okay. That looks okay. We got a little bit of splattering from the tack job before. I'm just going to get that off. Yes. There we go. Um, and you know, there is a little bit of splattering around uh, the through hole here. I'm going to wash my hands afterwards, of course, especially before I eat. But also, this is lead free solder, so I can touch it okay. But yeah, let's put the uh, potentiometers in, and that'll be good to go. You know what? My bet is that these are actually for circuit bending. Um, so if you're not familiar, circuit bending is this whole art where you can take an existing audio circuit or visual circuit or whatever and uh, mess around with it by poking uh, you know, connections to different areas on the circuit and whatever. My guess is that these are little breakpoints inside that attach to you know this uh, trace here or that trace there or this trace here on the other side of the board. Um, since it's a through hole, you can just touch it from either side, and that'll probably uh, mess with the sound in some way, which is pretty cool. Oh, look at those giant blobs of solder. That's not great, but I blame the fact that they're super thick speaker contacts. Let's get these potentiometers on. I'll see if they are friction fit. If not, I'll do them one at a time. And um, they're usually not friction fit. So we'll probably go one at a time and sort of do that tack soldering thing again. Let's see. So R1 is one mega ohm, R3 is one mega ohm, and R4 is 5k. So I'm going to guess that the little one is 5k because it's different from the others. Uh, the, the length of the knob shaft doesn't actually mean anything. Sorry. Uh, 1521. Sometimes they have labels as well. Oh, here we go. R5k. Great. So that is R4 here. Goes like that with the little... Oh, it's got little clampy boys. Uh, these little guys will hold it in place, hopefully, so that I can do all three of them at a time. Come on, get everything through there. Ah, yes. Ah, beautiful. Just snaps into place. That's gorgeous. Let's do two more. These other two are the same, so I don't have to worry about where they go. What a beautiful kit. This is really coming together. And I can't wait to see how it sounds, especially with that um, different capacitor. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Nixon says, use more flux. I could. I don't actually have my flux pen or a, a syringe over here right now. So all I'm working with is the flux that is inside the rosin core here. 
It is rosin core, isn't it? Maybe it's not. So, let's see. And honestly, it's going to be a good electronic connection. It um, The aesthetics are a little tiny bit off, but I can live with that. There we go. Oh, that's not quite covering the pad there. Got to go for aesthetics. Oh, I see. Trying to give you a good view without the ring light reflection on there. Here we go. Another good um, head tune is the Cats on Mars theme from Cowboy Bebop. Like ba da ba 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 ba. I've got the pitches all wrong there. It's a, it's a surprisingly hard little tune, but it's very cute. You should check it out. Cats on Mars from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> That series as a whole has amazing music, and it's classic. Speaking of classics, all right, so I think that's everything. Let's double check. Do do do. <laughs> we got this. Oh, I shouldn't have been doing the brass coil over the circuit. That's noob move. All right, cool. We've got our three potentiometers. Whoop whoop whoop. We've got our speaker, three caps, a chip, and a resistor. Uh, anything else on here? Let's just go from the top left. Um, three pots, one resistor, one chip, one, two, three caps, um, and our speaker. Yeah, cool. Let's put some uh, power on this, turn all our caps to low and see what ha or <laughs> caps, all our pots to low and see what happens. Do, 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 do. Here we are. Now I'll be able to make more beep boops. <laughs> And we can have that that going in the background if we want. Um, there's a little positive marker on there. Positive flat side up. Okay, I hear a really slow clicking. It's getting faster. Oh. It stops if I turn that one up. Oh, there we go. My guess is that, oh, there we go. Oh, this must be the volume one. That kind of makes sense. It's going to the speaker. Definitely sounds like an Atari Punk console. So I'm going to hold this up to the microphone so you can hear what's going on here. Uh, this one controls it uh, in a sort of continuous glide. And then this one changes it in discrete steps that kind of sound like an arpeggio. But it's hard to tell. I think it has to do with that capacitor. So this is uh, the left one here. Hear how that's a continuous change? And then we have. It gets much uh, quieter as it backs off there. Yeah. So, all right. I think this will be more fun once I switch out that cap. And I do have a whole extra box of caps around. But for now, uh, let's leave it be. Thank you for joining me for assembling this one. We have two more of these to go. This one is the Stepped Tone Generator Circuit Classics from uh, Star Simpson. Link in the description to the video. Also, we took a look at the main website. You can find them on Crowd Supply. And uh, let's see. So there's two other ones. We've got 
The dual LED flasher we'll do another time, and the bar graph voltage indicator, uh, which will let you become a scientist and an engineer, and it marks the passage of that important milestone of using tools you have constructed yourself. With your own voltmeter, you can measure batteries or use it to explore and understand other electronic circuits that you find in the world, including, for example, this one. You could uh, have this one uh, take it and use the voltage uh, indicator to sort of tap into different areas of this circuit and see what the voltages out are. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, oh, I forgot to put this in the little stand. I'll clean it off later, uh, but we still have these little rubber feet that we can put on. I'm gonna leave those off so that it sits nicely in this little stand holder and it can still make its little noises and stuff. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, find the link to Circuit Classics in the description of the video, and we'll see you soon, probably on another Throwback Thursday for more of these little uh, circuits. Yes. All right. Uh, hack on. <laughs>